I'm Ash Minnick, and welcome to Club Auspex, the show where we look into the unseen, where we talk to the players of the game New York by Night. We have just come from season one, episode three, and I am super excited to have with me here Erica Ishii and Abria Iyengar. We're just also very excited to be sitting next to each other. Oh, hi! Oh, hey. We didn't see you come oh, in! I oh, oh, hi! Oh, 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 oh. Uh, well, how long have y'all been here? I just, uh, <laughs> oh, the place uh, is oh, amazing. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, hi, hello! Hi. So, um, Abria is, is, you know, obviously uh, done this show before Club Auspex. She's <laughs> a professional now at just I, this. We have a talk back show now! Yeah. Yes, yes! Uh, wow. Welcome! <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and, and our, it's uh, Club Auspex, uh, Show Me Your Mind. Show Me Your Mind. Show Me Your Mind. Show Me Your Mind. Do I have to roll, like, to... to... There's no rolling, it's just talking. You cannot resist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I automatically succeed. Yeah. It's you, that's the, yeah, there's no rolls. I just, hmm. yeah, sorry. We can have that. But, yeah, so we'll start with... We'll start with the obvious. <laughs> Erica's back. Erica, hello. Yeah. Oh my Hi, God. I'm so Anna. glad to be back. Yeah. What a treat. What a treat to get to, to play with the new kids. Yeah, what was it like to be back at the table, but a different table? I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> so, I mean, I just, you know, it's it feels so good to just sort of sit back and like put it back on like an old jacket that you haven't washed since the last time you wore it. Is it, is it like that or is it exactly it's, that? It's, uh, that you know? or a fact. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was, it felt really good. It felt so comfortable because I just, I trust Jason implicitly and just I had already so many people at the table that I, I have yeah, such a rapport with and everybody else was was also just lightning fast and obviously was very comfortable in their characters already so it it just was easy it's easy to just come in and work with incredible people honestly and it's just such a treat to go back to Annabelle like and especially Annabelle at the end of the last season of LA by night yeah because she's already gone on such such a journey. Yeah. And now she's journeying to New York. Yeah. yeah. And Abria, you've, you've obviously played with Erica at, at Tabletop before. Oh my God, yes. But <laughs> this is your first time not only as vampires, also you've had, you know, two episodes and some session zeros with, with our coterie, but uh, bringing in a new, a new person, a fifth <gasps> person. I love it. So, so what was that like for you? Oh, I just beeped my mic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a professional. Uh, we'll, just, we'll edit it out. It's yeah, fine. cool. All mistakes get edited out. Make we look perfect. Make me look like I know what I'm doing. Uh, it was just, it was so incredible. And again, we talked before about, uh, I came up, came up, that's so crazy, but watching LA by Night, and I <gasps> always loved Annabelle. And Wait, what? Oh my God, are you kidding? Look, let's be very clear. A lot of Fuego is like, what if Annabelle, but a hoe? <laughs> So, Amazing! <laughs> you yeah. heard it here first. Yes, uh, but there's a lot of what the, if Annabelle but a hoe? But a hoe, because uh, okay. vampires are sexy, and she's like, I'm gonna lean in, just like that book told me to. But it's very fun to kind of like walk down an interesting street of like, I remember Annabelle like learning about the world and how interesting it was, and like getting to go through that again with you on the other side of it of just like now you are you are vampire daddy now please explain we are all a bunch of beautiful dum-dums yeah yeah like gorgeous little idiots yep. it's so great yeah so that's why i wear the vampire daddy shirt because yeah. it's like she's definitely stepped into that role and obviously she's, yeah. she's still young and still the has a lot has to become learn. the teacher yes. but yeah but she's like i know more than you guys and that's Bad. It's also easy because we mostly don't know anything. Exactly. <laughs> and what were Annabelle's first impressions of this coterie? Like, oh yeah, they. I mean, like she like peeks out and she's like immediately clocks them as Kendra and is like, wow, that's not great. Whoops. Which is not great. Mm -hmm. Also, that they don't seem to like they're a neighborhood watch. <laughs> like, and I guess technically, actually, um. <laughs> The coterie in LA by night started out as that too. We were supposed to be like <laughs> Scooby in the gang. Then immediately B. Dave Walters is like, I'm 
the Baron now. <laughs> and that took the whole show in a different direction. We were supposed to be solving like supernatural mysteries. Uh -huh. That was what we decided on at first. So who knows, like seeing this group starting out like that of like, oh, we're just like the homeowners association uh, <laughs> is, I don't like this dumb, you're all dumb. <laughs> I hope that you get your act together and go after the Camarilla and defend your people. And yeah, I, it's, I, I think she really would like to come back, especially to talk to the, yeah. new, the baby. baby. A baby. And it's like, I think there was a moment, uh, you know, where I looked at Abria and, you know, Annabelle looking at Fuego and, and realizing, like, oh, you, you are so lost and adrift and I can't, like, stay here to help you. And, and just, like, that moment of, like, jumping back in time to what it was like, no, being, like, knowing nothing and then having the Coterie adopt her and then yeah. seeing this group that it's like, okay, there they need to get their act together, but at least they all have each other, which I think was important. I think yeah. my favorite part of that was you're like having Annabelle say it was the first time I think there was like a beautiful moment where we all kind of looked at each other like, you did, you oh, did. It? Okay, well, dad said so. I guess we all have to keep hanging out. <laughs> I, I don't know if you remember, um, Erica, my very first episode on LA by Night, because I was lucky enough to be able to join you all at the table for a couple so of episodes. Good. But you were a baby vamp at that time, and during that episode was when uh, "vamily" became a word. Oh, yeah, and you had a mo that a very similar <gasps> moment where you were like, "Are we? Are we family?" Yes. It was, it was the same thing. And I know Fiona and and uh, Annabelle had a moment where you were baby vamp, and 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 you're like just asking everyone advice. Yeah, and it was so new, and so it was very interesting to now see that growth and where, you know, Annabelle has come and is like, oh God, you're doing yeah. all the same things. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild. And then also, yes, uh, it, it's so funny too, being at, at the table with Alex mm -hmm. and, and him playing a different character um, who's extremely well adjusted. Well, <laughs> sort of, <laughs> yeah. there's stuff going on and Annabelle oh, for immediately sure. clocked like, there's something, you're gonna be, there's gonna be something. There's something there. But yeah, immediately, Annabelle, uh, shoop, focus on Dear Fuego. Heaven. Yeah, I, I can't, yeah, I really hope I get to come back and still discuss some stuff. Yay. And uh, do you feel that Fuego felt that same immediate connection with Annabelle? Oh, 100%, not just because like, oh, I, I love her, like so much of it was like locked into the like, oh, I absolutely fuck with her politics. Like, mm -hmm. I like what she's saying. There's also, uh, there was this, a nice moment of teasing out a little bit of Fuego's like context with her sire and her relationship with her neighborhood. But like there were, it was basically like every cylinder she heard Annabelle fire on, she's like, oh, I get it. Yes, mm -hmm. I will offer you anything. Like, I feel like you get what I'm, where I'm coming from. A conversation I haven't had with the Coterie yet but like you seem to already be there. And I think it built a, a sort of like a, too much trust maybe, mm -hmm. like right up top. That's another thing too that, that's interesting because in terms of game mechanics, you know, like we, we talk about a lot how actual play and live streaming is different than playing a home game. And in a home game, and when you have time, you can be like, hey, I don't trust you. Like my character wouldn't really trust you or your characters. But a combination of it being Annabelle, who uh, like number one is like by nature wants to believe the best of people. And also number two, very much more powerful yeah. than the rest of these <laughs> vampires. And also me, Erica being like, okay, we've got an hour to go like i gotta <laughs> just get in there and drop stuff on them and and build this rapport it's like that combination of like immediately you gotta open the door and st and, and not yeah. to sort of dither around about it which i think is like the smart world of darkness player thing to do yeah right did you feel like you had to work at rationalizing like because you uh, annabelle basically was not only, she could have done a lot of things. She could have killed them, she could have ignored yeah. them, she could have just not left the Winnebago. But instead, she sort of was like, oh hey, this is my whole speech. I'm gonna yeah. convince all of you to fight the fight with me. Um, 
did you feel like you had to do a, work, a lot of work to rationalize that, or do you feel like there was something about this coterie that made Annabelle feel like they needed, they would, would follow the message? Yeah, I think it was, um, it, it was it was easy for her. Like I, I feel like it was very still very much in character for Annabelle to do that and to like see these neo neo neophytes. Neophy We're not even like neonates. Like, We're just neonates. little little fledgling babies. Yeah, just like these yeah. babies and and you know want to want to take care of them, which is. <laughs> crazy thinking about that character arc of her being baby. Annabelle yeah. was baby, then becoming sort of a den mother. Yeah. Um, and I think also she has sort of gotten the vibe too in New York and it's not, it's so different than Los Angeles mm -hmm. because everything feels like just sort of a, the annex are, are sort of really complacent. It was kind yeah. of like where LA was in the beginning of all of it. Um, and yeah, I think that was Joey brought up a good point of like, why would we sort of like start a war? Yeah. We don't need to, but I think Annabelle, Annabelle is right. Like war is coming to you. You yeah. cannot hide in rock. And I love the way that Alex sort of put a fine point on it and was like, why should I care? It's happening out. It's something else that, that, that affects other people and not me. Yeah. And I'm like, well, okay. Supposing that you don't care about other people, <laughs> yeah. which is also a thing to examine, perhaps, <laughs> uh, you know, also it will come to you. Yeah. And so, and I think immediately with, with Fuego and um, with Seraf too, um, it resonating, obviously resonating with them, I think that that would be very interesting for Annabelle. Yeah. Yeah. Because Fuego is very tied to the Bronx. Incredibly. It was yeah. very strongly about it, very protective. Can you talk? A, li a little bit, we haven't gotten too into that. I'd like to just, like, what does that mean for you, Abria? What does it mean for Fuego? What, how, why are the Bronx so important? And what does she want to do? Uh, for me, uh, kind of building the character, I just wanted, like, as we were talking about the setting, uh, I don't know, I, I always feel like the fun part of the assignment is, like, now tie yourself to it. Mm -hmm. And I always think of, like, the people that I, like, love and respect most in spaces are, like, the person that walks down the street and everyone knows them and says hi in that very like i like it's like a soft mob boss thing like oh that's just you know the neighborhood's mom and if you have a problem she'll talk to you if you do something wrong she'll tell your parents before you even get home like i and i wanted fuego to come from like a really well-adjusted background like her mom is that in her neighborhood and everyone knows her and she calls everyone that she knows cousin because she doesn't know who she's actually related related to or not and was raised understanding that like everyone here that's like serving the community and looks out for each other those are your family and to have someone so inexorably tied to this place and then remove yourself via death and embrace and still have like Fine. the echoes of humanity that manifest primarily mm -hmm. as protection of the neighborhood and like that recontextualization, like we were talking about, like feeling a little bit like a superhero, like oh, I'm, I'm Batman now. I can look out over them, but I can't be a part of it, but I still have that feeling. It was really nice early in the episode uh, when, um, when Ray and I were going, I got to finally talk about my convictions mm -hmm. about like protect, protect the Bronx from anyone yeah. that would attack it. And that means we get to do a, a, little, a little light murder every now and then. So it was very fun getting to like lean in and have Fuego like live her values and speak a little more to them. I really love that. That was something that definitely a parallel with Annabelle with like so tied in with the community and her activism and her her family or like her 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 lovers and and just like really having this tie and these stakes in the community because it makes what you're fighting for so much more important cuz mm -hmm. I think that it was one huge delineation between traditional Dungeons and Dragons campaigns and LA by night when I first started playing, I was like, oh, there are consequences. We live here. Yes. We can't just like come in and take up the cause of people that we don't know and then like be heroes and then move on. We have to maintain all the relationships that we have here. Like if we do a murder, there will be consequences. Jason's gonna take a note. It's gonna come up later. Yeah. Um, whereas a lot of times in Dungeons and Dragons, 
as it's played popularly, yes. there are no consequences, really. There yeah. are no long-term consequences. And so I think the, the you know, if, if D&D is like Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. Vampire, it is like consequences yes. and, and threats, you know? 100%. And, and I, I really like that. And I love the fact of having a character that is so tied in that it really does give the whole entire campaign stakes like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then in the doing a little light murder, you were trying to convince Ray to yeah. kill someone. Yeah. What? Do you, I I want to hear about them. Oh Tell yeah. Me about this. Tell uh, me about this. Let's, oh, this let's, let's explore this. It's not in here. That's let's explore great. this light murder. Look, the truth of the matter is, uh, Fuego is a fucking venture. Like, she has. A, a soft command of power and influence and like it's so fun like digging into the me mechanics and seeing how how the system wants you to care about being a Ventrue and it felt so good in that moment and it was like little things that like Joey has telegraphed over time where I was like oh Fuego doesn't have to do this herself she's not built to fight she's built to get what she wants and look here's this perfectly lovely uh, machine built for killing Let's use it. So I think she didn't think of it like uh, consciously, but is sort of realizing her power and her influence over people. And then in that moment, did not hesitate to use it and will not inspect, uh, maybe later, but definitely not now, will not, like refuses to inspect like what that says about her and how she actually cares for the people that she now understands to be her coterie. Ooh. Was yeah. that something that you, <laughs> As a player, like you, Bria, like you sort of knew you wanted to do something similar to that, or did it just sort of just happen in the moment and you were just like, oh, this is what I'm doing? Uh, it was something I kind of started thinking about after episode one when I realized the sort of bond that Fuego and Ray had up top. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, the sort of, I, I like calling it my DM brain because it's always the most like adversarial part of my mind. It's like, <laughs> how do you twist something? And I was like, oh, if I was a meaner version of myself, I would do, hold on. This is a game about monsters. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Do this later. And I think it's really interesting too that we as players have like a very distinct awareness of our characters yeah. beasts and our characters flaws because like Annabelle was sort of played as, and sort of like set up as, and we didn't have the sort of talk back to talk to discuss this at <laughs> the time, but like she was set up as like, yes, sort of like the spark of a revolution and like the, the, the chosen one sort of a thing. But at the same time, like she was, despite her, you know, pacifism, like she caused the deaths of a lot of people. Yeah. And that is something that she sort of realized over the course of it, because she was like, yes, I'm absolutely doing the right thing. But that's her beast talking, is like, stir shit up, rebel, like yeah. fight the power. And it's like, sometimes damn the consequences. And so that was a thing. And sometimes, Amazing. like, your character yeah. is gonna get what she wants, you know, but like, at a cost, because yep. that's what our beasts tell us to do. Yeah. And it's so fun playing with that as a player and like looking down and being like, oh, these are m the mistakes that I'm knowingly putting my character into, you yes. know? Yeah. Um, whereas they have no idea. Also, so, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I just want to say also, it's very fun that I uh, finally got to hear uh, from my beast whose voice is one that like we talked about, I was like, oh, I have complicated but incredibly strong feelings for my sire. So hearing that voice specifically, I, I it was fun to note that I was like, oh, I don't bump against my beast the way others do. I'm like, yes, okay, yeah, that sounds that sounds great. And if you wanna just stay and maybe we could go get ice cream. Okay, goodbye. Yeah. Daddy issues. Vamp daddy issues. Vamp daddy issues, baby. Yeah, more parallels. <laughs> yeah. So We've talked about how Annabelle came in with this arc and now the you know student has become the teacher. What what advice would Erica have? Or I guess I don't have to talk about you in third person, I guess just say you. <laughs> what advice do you have for the players? Not just not just Annabelle oh, for the vampires. Oh man! Yes. Why would I presume to give advice to this like <laughs> Team of killers? No! Teach me wow. daddy! All right, then I'll rephrase. I, uh, what well, advice? I would say just, just have fun. Because I remember starting out on this, I was so nervous. I was so nervous because it was the first 
you know, I had really hadn't done a game before. I had done Saga of Sundry um, on, but I hadn't really done a serious sort of long form campaign. And, uh, you know, I came in as the person who knew the least about Vampire. And, and so I felt like there was a lot of pressure. And I was like getting really ahead and I took, took it very seriously. But, you know, I mean, I feel like, you know, you had a whole damn summer. You know, <laughs> you know the drill. But like, yeah, it's just, yeah, say, save these precious moments. Because yes. like you have such a great crew and such a great cast and, 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 the, like like we get to play, you know, yeah. and and I think there was a little bit of a pressure at first for for all of us that we had to navigate. That was like, this is a job, but also you know we're friends, but also we you know sort of are trying to say something, you know, with an overarching story as opposed to kind of just taking it as it comes, you know. And it all worked together really beautifully and really well, and and so yeah, just. Kind of enjoy that. Just oh. sit in it. Okay, you know, I'm just around gonna in it. it. Roll yeah. around in it. Marinate. Yeah. I love that. If you if you could ask Erica anything, any advice? <gasps> ask me anything. Um, what are you doing later? Are you free for a drink? We I meant about vampire. Oh, okay. or just so, about, oh, like, yeah. Um, oof, uh, I guess it could be about you know other stuff, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I think uh, the big one is how did you come about balancing like what your clan and sort of the expectation of kindred was versus like Annabelle's in like initial priorities. Like how did you go about thinking about it was walking down that. It road. was really interesting. We we kind of joked that it, Annabelle was like uh Schrodinger's Bruja, right? Or is it like <laughs> Is she a pacifist because like that's what she believes in and that's like what she did in life, you know? Or and, and like that's it's the right thing to do, or is it because that's what her beast is telling her to do? Ugh. Like, is it telling her, okay, you need to rebel. Do that by not ever killing and drinking somebody. Yeah. Which was like a really weird thing to think about. Fun, you know? Oh, so so I I think it was it was so interesting to kind of subvert the expectations of this specific clan yeah. to sort of build into what her personal goals were. And that was, I love that like Jason got to play, like we got to play with that and, and, and just sort of test that too. Yeah, um, so good. Yeah, so I, would say, I would say that, like I would say sort of, and it seems like you're doing it with your character where it's like, you're very about the community and you're very about like sort of spreading that, you know, wealth and that happiness and everything. But like, how does that manifest as your bees? We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> they're fun. Yeah. Well, thank you both for showing me your minds. I loved it, I loved it, it was enjoyable. Uh, thank you everybody at home for joining us in another awesome episode of Club Auspex. Uh, thanks for joining the club. We'll see you again in episode four after season one of New York by Night, episode four. Yeah, this, you have more clubbing.